welcome to all of you in this third particular lecture on sheet metal operations 3. As you can see on your screens the title of the lecture that is sheet metal operations third session. We already had two, section, two sessions on sheet metal operations in which we discussed various sheet metal operations. We have already gone through some of the basic principles of shearing, notching, nibbling and lancing, piercing, then we discussed what is bending, sheet bending we have seen in detail, then we started our discussion on drying in the last lecture. So, we have just initiated the discussion on drying which will be carried forward in this particular session. Then we will complete the drying operation, we will see what is embossing, what is coining, then what are the various type of die punch type of mechanisms or arrangements or machines that can be used for sheet metal operations. After that we will see what are the various ways in which we can manufacture a die or what are the various operations for die manufacturing. Later on we will see what are the die failures, different types of die failures. So, initiating our discussion on sheet metal operations 3, carrying forward from wherever we left in the last lecture, we will discuss what is the basic principle of drying. Now, this is the drying operation. Drying it is a process of cold forming a flat blank of sheet metal into a hollow vessel without much wrinkling, trimming or fracturing. So, this we have discussed in detail that the limiting factor here is the wrinkling, trimming or fracturing. The process is a cold forming process and the flat blank of sheet is converted into a vessel or into a utensil or into any desired shape which is required. Then the process involves forcing the sheet metal blank into a die cavity with a punch. So, again a punch and die arrangement will be used in order to convert the flat, bla flat blank into the final shape. The final shape will depend upon the requirements and the specifications of the product that we are aiming for. The punch here exerts sufficient force and the metal is drawn over the edge of the die opening and into the die. So, the punch will exert, suppose this is the punch, this is the flat blank. So, the punch will come and it will exert a force on the die blank which will go into the die cavity and take the form of the die cavity. Now, the die cavity will be a exact replica or may have certain geometrical features that we want to have in our final product. Sufficient force here means that the force should not exceed a particular limit. If the force exceeds a particular limit, there are every chances that the sheet may crack or some kind of fracture or catastrophic failure may take place. Moreover, the operation has to be done at a particular speed. If we are not maintaining the particular speed and there is an impact, then under that impact force of the punch, the sheet may crack. So, there are number of limiting factors, number of process variables that have to be controlled in order to successfully draw a flat blank sheet into a hollow vessel or into a required shape. For example, in forming a cup, the metal goes completely into the die. So, forming operations are important operations out of which drying is also one of the most important operations and now we are discussing the drawing operation. Till now we have seen what is a drawing operation? Uh, there is a punch die type of arrangement, there is a flat blank of sheet metal which is given the desired shape by applying sufficient force with the help of a punch, the die gives the shape to the final vessel or the final product. We will try to understand this with the help of a simple diagram. Now, this is the diagram, here we can see this is the punch as I have depicted with the help of my hand, this is the punch, this is the blank, here we can see, this is the blank, this is the punch and why this counter bore 
portion is there that we will see in our discussion at a later stage. This is the blank holder which supports the blank and this is the guide plate. So, there is a punch basically and there is a die. This is the die and this is the punch. The punch will exert a sufficient force on the blank and try to give it the desired shape. Now, this is a operation being completed. The punch has been withdrawn. It has in a withdrawn position. This is basically the shell that has been made and this is the counter board portion. Why that counter board portion is provided? Already I have told, we will discuss in this lecture itself. This is the die, then there is a guide plate and there is a blank holder. There Here there will be a blank holder which will hold the blank in place. Another point to note here is the radius that has been provided. This is the punch, there has been a radius. This is a radius that has been provided here. Moreover, a radius has also been provided on the die surface. Here we see this is a radius capital R, this is small r on the punch. So, here we see that a radius has been provided on the punch as well as on the die. Why this radius is provided? We will see. Now, drawing operation uses a setup which is quite similar to that used for blanking and it is there is a slight difference in the setup that we are using in blanking as well as that we are using in a drying operation. A setup similar to that used for blanking is used for drying with the difference. What is the difference? The difference is that the punch and the die are given rounding at the corners. In the diagram we have seen that small r and capital R are the radii that has been provided on the punch and the die surface respectively. So, given rounding at the corners to permit smooth flow of metal during drawing. So, while we were seeing the diagram, I have told that why this radius is provided, we will see in a subsequent slide. So, here we have addressed the solution or addressed the problem that why that radius is provided. That radius is provided for the smooth flow of metal into the die cavity. In case of blanking operation, we form a slug or a slug is formed or a blank is formed. Here that blank or the complete shearing is not going to take place. The complete shearing is not taking place. The metal is deforming under the force of the punch to give the desired shape as is required. So, where for that deformation, the metal has to enter into the die cavity and when the metal flows over a rounded corner, the chances of any type of failure any type of crack, any type of fracture are minimum. In order to facilitate the easy flow of metal or the sheet metal into the die cavity, these rounded portions are provided. Moreover, the blank of appropriate dimensions is placed within the guides on the die plate. So, the blank is of appropriate dimension. What is that appropriate dimension that we will see in the subsequent slide. So, depending upon the final volume, the final shape of the product that we want to make, we can take a decision that what should be the appropriate dimension of the blank size or the flat sheet metal which has to be used for getting the desired accuracy as well as the desired shape as well as the desired dimensional control over the final product. Now, in case of the drying operation, the punch descends slowly. Already I have told that the speed of the punch is also very, very important. If the punch comes at a very fast pace and hits the sheet metal, it is going to create a hole or it is going to pierce into the sheet metal. That is not required. This is not a piercing or a punching operation. It is a drawing operation. So, the speed of the punch has to be controlled so that the impact is not there. It is not an impact phenomenon or impact process. It is a process where the gradually the punch has to give a shape to the sheet metal. So, the punch descends slowly on the blank and metal is drawn into the die. So, when the punch comes in contact with the blank, it exerts a sufficient force and the blank is forced into the die and the blank is formed into the shape of the cup as the punch reaches the bottom of the die. So, when the punch comes in contact with the sheet metal blank and it exerts a sufficient force, the metal goes into the die and takes the form of a cup 
and takes the shape of a cup as the punch reaches the bottom of the die. Now, comes the important point that why that counter board portion was provided. Now, when the cup reaches the countered board portion of the die, the top edge of the cup formed around the punch expands a bit due to the spring back. Now, we see that there is a blank when a punch is coming in contact with the blank it is forcing the metal into the die cavity. Now, when the punch reaches the bottom and the process has been completed the cup that has been formed it opens up slightly. Why that opening up takes place because of the elastic recovery which we call as the spring spring back action. Now, because of the spring back slight opening of the at the edge of the cup that has been formed that takes place. Now, because of that spring back it as it opens up while the punch retracts its path back or the punch moves up this particular cup that has been formed strikes against the countered board portion and falls down. So, when the cup reaches the countered board portion of the die the top edge of the cup formed around the punch expands a bit due to the spring back action as I have already explained. On the return stroke of the punch when the punch is coming up the cup is stripped of the punch by this countered board portion. As the cup has opened up a bit the edge of the cup has opened up because of the spring back action. When the punch retracts back or comes up the countered board portion will help in the stripping up of the cup that has been formed with the punch. Otherwise, if this portion is not there the punch the cup that has been formed and is attached to the punch sometimes the cup may be attached to the punch. Why? Because suppose we are using a lubricant then because of the thin film that is developed between the cup as well as the punch the cup may be attached to the punch and it may try to come up with the punch that is not required. So, stripping up of the cup is required which is easily facilitated by this countered board portion. Now, we try to address uh, another term that is shallow drying. The term shallow drying is used when the height of the cup formed is less than half its diameter. So, very easy to understand that whenever the height of the cup that has formed is less than half its diameter that particular that particular process or that particular drawing operation is called shallow drying. Now, when drawing a deeper cup that is when the height is greater than half times the diameter the chances of excessive wrinkle formation at the edges of blank increases. So, whenever we are going for shallow drying there are chances that no wrinkling will take place. But whenever we are drawing a deeper cup where the height is greater than half times the diameter the chances of excessive wrinkling may be there or excessive wrinkling may take place which will limit the use of the cup or if even if the cup has been formed or even if the shape has been formed it has to be subjected to a subsequent trimming or a machining operation in order to give an acceptable quality level to the wrinkles or to the edges of the cup. Now, as the drying process proceeds the blank holder stops the blank from increasing in thickness beyond a limit and allows the metal to flow radially. So, it is very very clear very plainly it has been written as the drying process proceeds when the drying process will proceed the blank holder now we see that in the basic figure of drying process there was a label that was depicting the blank holder. So, why was that blank holder present there the blank holder stops the blank for increasing in thickness. So, there are chances that the thickness of the blank may increase or it may decrease. So, in order to check that increasing of the thickness of the blank this blank holder is provided and it checks the increasing of the thickness beyond a limit and allows the metal to flow radially. Now, the metal has to flow radially. So, it allows the metal to flow radially and check the increase in the thickness of the sheet or the thickness of the blank. That is why a blank holder is provided on the blank. Then the limiting thickness is controlled by the gap between the die and the blank holder. Now, there is a blank holder 
there is a die surface in between we are placing the blank or the sheet which has to be deformed which has to be drawn into a usable item then the gap is adjusted between the die as well as the blank holder or by a spring pressure in case of a spring loaded blank holder so now the blank holder which is there suppose this is the die surface on top of that there is a blank holder this blank holder can be spring loaded also now this gap has to be adjusted between the die surface and the blank holder so this can be adjusted in any number of ways it can be adjusted using a screw type of arrangement or it can be adjusted in case of a spring loaded type of a blank holder now in case of a drawing operation some lubricant is generally used over the face of the blank to reduce friction and hence the drawing load so already we have discussed that why the cup is attached to the punch sometimes because there is a lubricant on the face of the blank and when the punch comes in contact with the blank because of this lubricant a thin film of attraction thin thin film may develop in between the punch and the blank and when the process is completed it may stick to the punch surface so that is one of the uh, limiting points of the using a lubricant but the lubricant is required why it is required because it generally is it is used over the face of the blank to reduce friction and hence the drying load so drying load is reduced as well as the friction is reduced thereby lubrication is an important aspect of the drying operation now what should be the appropriate blank size now blank size is important why because what whatever shape that we want to make depends upon the blank size suppose we take a smaller blank size and whenever we press it with the help of a ram the shape that we get may not be a complete shape because the appropriate metal is or the sheet is not there so the size of the blank also plays a very important role so it is generally difficult to find the exact size of the blank suppose i take this much size of a blank and i use a punch suppose i punch it like this now the final shape that i will get depends upon the size of the blank if the blank is of larger size then sometimes some metal is left out and it will be it some kind of wrinkling may appear on the edges moreover if the size is very very small i may not get the exact shape that we want to make so it is generally difficult to find the exact size of the blank needed for drawing a given cup because of thinning and thickening of the metal sheet during the drawing operation now sometimes the sheet may become thin at some particular sections and at other particular sections the sheet may become thick so this thinning and thickening action of the sheet metal sheet usually makes it very very difficult to exactly get the size of the blank that is required to form a cup there are simple relations that help us to determine the blank diameter d so using some mathematical equations using some mathematical relations we can estimate that what should be the diameter of the blank size for making our final product although it is difficult because of thinning and thickening of metal sheet and at some particular sections but still using analytical or mathematical formulations we can sometimes arrive at a approximate value of the diameter which should be required for forming a cup now these are some of the formulations or mathematical formula that can be used to get the blank size diameter now d is the diameter of the blank size the following simple relations can be used for determining the blank diameter d now blank diameter capital d it is equal to square root of d square plus 4 time dh minus 0.5 times r now this particular equation we will use when d is greater than equal to 20 times r what is this r what is d what is h d is the outside diameter of the cup h is equal to height of the cup and r is equal to corner radius on punch 
when we saw the basic drawing operation we have seen a corner radius is given a corner radius is given on the punch moreover a radius is also given on the die surface that was given by capital r so this is that small r that is the radius that is given on the punch so r is the corner radius on the punch h is the height of the cup and d is the outside diameter of the cup now depending upon these features we can very easily calculate that what should be the approximate dimension or the diameter of the blank size now capital d depicts as we have seen the blank diameter so blank diameter d can be calculated as square root of d square plus 4 times dh minus 0.5 times r what are this d h and r that we have already seen now this equation will be particularly used when d is greater than equal to 20 r so when the outside diameter of the cup is greater than 20 times the corner radius of the punch that that particular situation under that particular condition we are going to use this particular relation for calculating the blank diameter similarly another equation that is square root of d square plus 4 dh minus 0.5 r this particular equation we will use when d that is the outside diameter of the cup is between 15 r and 20 r that is 15 times the corner radius of the punch and 20 times the corner radius of the punch so whenever the outside diameter of the cup is in between 15 r and 20 r we are going to use this particular relation to calculate the blank diameter similarly there is another particular condition that is when the outside diameter of the cup is between 10 r and 15 r and that particular condition we are going to use this relation that is the blank diameter capital d is equal to square root of d square plus 4 times dh minus 5 times r so once again just to summarize what is dh and r d is the outside diameter of the cup that is small d we are talking now capital d gives the blank diameter small d is the outside diameter of cup h is equal to the height of the cup and r is equal to the corner radius on the punch so we can see that although it is quite difficult to estimate that what is going to be the exact blank diameter for a given height of a cup that we want to form but still using these mathematical equations we can easily estimate that what is required what is the size of the blank diameter required to form a cup so we have seen in case of bending in the previous lecture that a bending force is required to bend the sheet metal at a particular angle similarly a drawing force is required for drawing operation for drawing cylindrical shells having circular cross section so we are talking about cylindrical shells only which are having circular cross section the maximum drawing force p so capital p denotes the maximum drawing force can be determined by the relation so this is the relation for calculating the drawing force now this is given by capital p that is the drawing force is equal to k multiplied by t multiplied by d multiplied by t multiplied by y so there are some parameters what are these parameters that we will discuss now this is the equation d is the outside diameter of the cup t is the thickness of the material y is the yield strength of the material and k is the factor whose value is approximately equal to d by d 0.6 and capital d is the blank diameter so this capital d this is the blank diameter small d is the outside diameter of the cup so depending upon this drawing force we can calculate now we have seen that what is the drawing force requirement we have seen what is the drawing operation what are the different types of drawing operations we have seen then we have seen that 
there is a force that is required for drawing a metal then we have seen that what is the size of the blank diameter that should be required we have seen that there are mathematical formula according to which we can calculate that what should be the blank diameter for a given height and outside diameter of the cup that we want to make now finishing our discussion on the drawing operation we will now shift our attention to two other important processes of sheet metal operations that are embossing and coining so what is basically the embossing process now embossing is an operation in which sheet metal is drawn to shallow depths with male and female matching die so the depth in case of embossing is not too much in case of drawing we have seen the depth is substantial but in case of embossing the depth will not be too much it will be a very shallow depth so embossing is an operation in which sheet metal is drawn to shallow depths already i have told the depth will not be as comparable to as was in the drawing operation and with male and female matching dies so here male and female matching dies will be used whereas in case of drawing operation where we wanted to have a appreciable depth we were using a punch and a die type of arrangement here we will use a male and female type of matching dies we will try to understand it with the help of a very simple diagram here we will have a male and female matching die in between we will have a sheet metal and on that we will have we can form a embossing now where is the use of this the operation is carried out mostly for the purpose of stiffening flat panels so if flat panels are there the stiff if we want to stiffen them if we want to increase their stiffness then we can go for stiffening of flat panels with the help of embossing operation the operation is also sometimes used for making decorative items like number plates or name plates or jewelry sometimes we might have seen that some number plates of some of the vehicles have some embossed number so they have be, have been raised so the out in the particular plane of the sheet we see that some numbers are raised so that raising of the numbers that is called embossing the increasing at uh, that the depth is a shallow depth it is not too the depth is not too much it is considerably less as compared to the drawing operation so the operation is also sometimes used for making decorative items like number plates or name plates as well as jewelry items so letters numbers and designs on sheet metal parts so sheet metal part there can be numbers on sheet metal part there can be certain designs on sheet metal part sometimes we have some decorative uh, we have seen that in our houses we have some decorative paintings etc some decorative uh, images of gods that have been embossed on the sheet metal can be produced by this operation so we can have letters numbers embossed on the sheet metal so this is a diagram where we see that this is the work piece this colored portion this is the work piece and this is another section of the work piece and these are some of the areas which have been embossed so these can be any numbers or these can be any alphabets so depending upon what do we want to have on a sheet metal what do we want to print on the sheet metal in the embossed manner we can select a particular male and female type of die so this die here we can see this is a male die this is a female die and in between we place our sheet metal so whenever this male and female parts will meet we will have embossed portion here so the sheet metal will be embossed so this is a embossing operation with the help of two dies that is the male die as well as the female die so here we can see that the work piece has been embossed these are the embossed sections this this particular section as this dotted line show the position of the section on the sheet metal this is the complete sheet metal this is the section where embossing has taken place this has been clearly outlined here with the help of his, of this dotted line this is the particular section here in this view and this is the section 
in the other view. So, this is a section which has been embossed. So, this is the basics of the embossing operation that we can carry out on sheet metal in order to print letters or numbers or some decorative paintings etcetera. So, th that is that was all that we discussed regarding the embossing operation. So, after embossing we are going to address another important operation that is coining operation. So, coining can also be done on sheet metals. So, coining is a severe metal squeezing operation in which the flow of metal occurs only at the top layers of the material and not throughout. So, in case of coining only at the top layers only the deformation or the flow of metal will take place. It will not take place throughout only at the top layer and it is a severe squeezing operation. So, too much of pressure will be applied in order to impart very intricate details on the surface of the sheet metal. So, the operation is carried out in closed dies mainly for the purpose of producing fine details such as needed in minting coins and medals or jewelry making. So, very fine details when we have to imprint onto the surface of a sheet metal, we will go for the coining operation. So, we can take out a coin a new coin from our pocket and see that there are so many fine details on the coin. So, how those details have been imprinted? That details have been imprinted using a closed die type of a metal forming operation under a high value of loading. High value of loading means that the pressures that are exerted are very, very high in case of coining operation. The blank is kept in the die cavity and the pressures as high as 5 to 6 times the strength of the material are applied. So, the pressure requirement or the forces that are exerted on the sheet metal are extremely high in case of the coining operation. Now, depending upon the details required to be coined on the part, more than one coining operations may be used. So, now this depends that what is the final requirement, what is the final specification of the product that we want to make out of the coining operation. We have to make a decision that whether we have to do it in one particular go only or we have we can take a number of goes or a number of coining operations. Now, what is the di basic difference between a coining and a embossing operation? The difference between coining and embossing is that the same design is created on both sides of the workpiece in embossing. One side is depressed and the other raised. So, we have seen in the basic diagram of the embossing process that there is a male as well as a female die. The male die has some protrusion, protrusion sorry and the female die has some cavity. Now, this protrusion will go into the die cavity or the cavity on the female die and in between sheet metal will get the shape of the protrusion. But here in case of the coining operation, a different design is created on each side of the work piece. We can see that if we take out a coin on one side there is another design, on another side there is the another design. In case of embossing this on the male die the protruding portion will go into the cavity opposite cavity on the female die and in between sheet will get the desired shape. So, the basic difference between embossing and a coining operation is that in embossing we will get similar type of design on one side it will be raised on other side it will be cavity whereas, in case of the coining operation we will get different designs on the different sides of the coin or the different sides of the part that we are coining using the process of coining operation. Now, we come on to another important aspect of metal forming that is die and punch. We have been discussing different types of metal forming operations. In metal forming operations, we discuss what are the different types of sheet metal forming operations. In sheet metal forming operations, we have seen the different types of die and punch arrangements are there. Sometimes the die is given a radius to ensure the smooth flow of the metal into the die cavity. We see that there is a blank, that blank is punched. When 
using the punch we apply sufficient pressure the metal flows slowly into the die cavity then that radius is provided on the die so there are different types of mechanisms where the punch and die are used so we will we will try to address and we will try to understand what are the various mechanisms of die and punch assembly or die and punch operation now this diagram we have already seen when we saw the basic principles of shearing when we discussed what is punching what is blanking we have seen this diagram earlier also but here we would like to understand this in a bit of greater detail here we see if we closely observe this particular diagram three views are given of the operation if we see this is the basic view we have a punch this is the punch one point to note here although most of you might have noted this is die and punch set for blanking operation so if some of you have not noted the point i would like to illustrate it that see the edge here the edge of the punch this particular point suppose i call it a and this particular point b a and b are very fine these are very fine edges with no radius that has been provided this is a blanking operation mind you now this is the die the die is also shown here this is the die and this particular point suppose i call it c and this particular point we call it d now c and d also have not been provided any radius point a and b on the punch and c and d on the die have not been provided any radius whereas in case of a drying operation there was a small r that was small radius was provided on the punch and similarly a capital r a radius corresponding to capital r was provided on the die surface why was that provided in order to have a smooth flow of the sheet metal into the die cavity with the exertion of force with the punch but in case of blanking no such diameter on the or the radius on the punch as well as a radius on the die have been provided now we can see that this is a basic die and punch blanking operation now this is the direction of the feed direction of the feed means that this is the blank or the stock here we call here we will call the blank as a stock in which from which we have to make our blanks now this is the work piece that is we have made so this is the stock that is fed from here in another view of the same diagram we can see this is being fed from here so this is the scrap we have seen that after the punching whatever we get is a scrap in case of blanking operation in case of punching operation this would have been the work piece but in case of blanking operation this is the scrap so now see this is the axis and this is the punch now punch is making the work piece out of this stock this stock is being fed from this direction now when the stock is being fed from this direction there is a position where the blank has to be formed now this is the exact position where the punch has to go and form the blank now how to locate the scrap this particular metal sheet at that particular how to secure this particular metal sheet at that particular position we have a stop pin type of arrangement here here we can see this is a stop pin from this direction when we feed the stock this will go and hit this stop pin which will stop the feed of the metal and on top of this there is a punch there is another arrangement for exact positioning of the sheet under the punch or the centering of the sheet under the punch what is that if we see another view of this particular diagram here we see there is a back stop this is the back stop so this this particular center where the blanking has to be done we will locate this using this back stop as well as this stop pin so stop pin and back stop are used for exact securing of the metal sheet at a location under the punch where the blanking has to be 
carried out. Moreover, here we can see that there is a die clearance angle, this is the die clearance angle. So, why this die clearance angle is provided? This is the angular die clearance, we can see that it has been specified in term of an angle. So, this die clearance angle or the angular clearance, why this is provided? This we will see and we will try to understand it. Another important point is that there is a stripper plate that has been provided here. Why this stripper plate is provided? When the punch after performing the per operation of blanking, it comes up, there is a tendency that it may try to lift this stock plate along with the punch. The punch goes in this direction, performs the blanking operation and then it retracts its path. This is the path of the punch. It, when it retracts its path, there is a tendency that this stock may get lifted along with the punch. In order to avoid that kind of a lifting, there is a stripper plate that will strip off this stock from the punch. So, the important points that we have noted here in this particular diagram, we will see and we will review this, we will summarize this again, but here when the diagram is there on your screen, you can see that what are the important points we have addressed here. This is the direction of the feed, then this is the scrap that is forming, this is the work piece that is forming, this is the punch that is forming the blanking operation, then there is a stop pin and there is a backstop to secure the exact position of the work piece or the stock on the table or the die and then this is the die on which the stock is there. So, in this way we are able to produce the blanks which are our work pieces. So, this is the die and punch set for blanking operation. Now, we will try to understand it or review this process. So, how this process is working? The punch which is held in the punch holder is bolted to the press ram while the die is bolted to the press table. So, this die is bolted to the press table which is not shown in this picture. So, this all operation will be carried out with the press. There are different types of presses which are used for sheet metal forming operations. In our subsequent lecture, we will give due attention, we will have a discussion on the different types of presses, we will classify the presses depending upon a number of parameters that will be discussed in the subsequent chapter. But here we can just to understand, we can say that this punch is attached to ram portion of the press and this die is placed on the table of the press. So, the punch is which is held in the punch holder is bolted to the press ram, there will be a press ram which to which this particular punch will be fastened and while the die is bolted to the press table, there will be a table of the press on which the die will be bolted. During the working stroke, the punch penetrates the strip, this punch will penetrate the strip and on the return stroke of the press ram, the strip is lifted with the punch. Already in the diagram, I have told that when this punch retracts its path, the strip or the stock may get lifted along with the punch. So, when on the return stroke of the press ram, the strip is lifted with the punch, whenever this happens, it is removed from the punch by the stripper plate. So, that stripper plate that was provided over the die acts as a stripping mechanism for stripping of the stock from the punch. So, we have seen that the design is such that the stock is not lifted with the punch. Then the stop pin is a gauge and it sets the advance of the strip stock within the punch and die. Now, there is a punch and a die and we have to feed the metal strip or the metal stock or the sheet metal. So, when we feed this sheet metal, it has to go and stop at one particular section and this particular stop pin will act as a gauge and it will help to secure the positioning of the sheet metal just below the punch where the blank has to be produced. The strip stro stock is butted against the backstop acting as a datum location for the center of the blank. Already when we were Looking at the diagram, we have seen that there are two important arrangements that is one is the stop pin and another is the backstop. So, this backstop and stop pin helps to secure the position of the sheet metal at its appropriate location 
where the punch has to come and perform the operation of blanking. The die opening is given angular clearance. I have shown that angular clearance is given to the die opening to permit escape of the good part. So, the good part here is the blank. So, a sheet is being blanked with the help of a punch and the blank that is formed with the punch with the help of a punch is the useful product in case of the blanking operation. Whereas, in case of the punching operation as we have already discussed, discussed in our first lecture on sheet metal operations that was sheet metal operations 1 that the in punching the other portion or the other portion that is left is the usable part, but in case of blanking the blank that is that has been punched off is the usable part or that is the good part. The waste skeleton here we are calling it as a waste skeleton, but in case of punching this will be a usable part that will be the finished part. So, the waste skeleton of the stock strip from which the blanks have been cut. So, blanks have already been cut and blanks are our work pieces, Bell blanks are the jobs that we want to make out of the blanking operation. So, whatever is the waste material or the waste skeleton of the stock strip is recovered as the salvaged material. So, whatever is the that particular portion that has been left over is salvaged. So, one particular example of this type of operation although not in case of sheet metal operations or sheet metal forming is there is a large blank of rubber out of which the different chapels or the different footwear have been stamped out. So, that can be one particular example of stamping operation in which whatever has been stamped out is our final product and the remaining is a waste product. Now, the clearance angle provided on the die depends on the material of the stock as well as its thickness. Now, how much angle to provide? Why the angle is provided? We have already seen so that the blank can easily come out of the die, but how much clearance angle should be provided? That depends upon the material. Now, sheet metal can be made up of a number of different types of material depending upon that what is our final requirement or what is the final product that we want to make. Now, whatever angle has to be provided that depends upon the sheet metal or the material of the sheet metal as well as it depends upon the thickness of the sheet metal. So, the clearance angle provided on the die depends on the material of the stock as well as its thickness. Now, for thicker and softer materials. Now, depending upon the material means it can be a hard material, it can be a soft material, it can be a ductile material, it can be a malleable material depending upon the qualities of the material. If the material is thicker and it is a softer material generally high angular clearance is given. So, if the material is thicker suppose the sheet thickness is considerably higher as well as the material is soft then we will have a higher angular clearance. Whereas, in most cases 2 degree of angular clearance is sufficient. Now, angle will always be specified in terms of degrees only, we cannot specify the clearance in terms of millimeter. Here the clearance that is a general trend that 2 degree of angular clearance is sufficient in most of the cases. Now, we will see the importance of clearance. Now, in blanking compression the die size is taken as the blank size. Now, blanking operation we see that the die size there is a size of the die that has been provided in the very first diagram we saw that there was a size of the die and there was an angular clearance that was given by an angle alpha that was provided for the easy release of the blank. Now, in blanking operation the die size is taken as the blank size that is the blank size is our final size that we are preparing that we are manufacturing here. So, the die size that we are die opening that we are providing at the top will be equal to the size of the blank that we want to produce. So, the die size is taken as the blank size and the punch is made smaller giving the necessary clearance between the die and the punch. So, here we can just see that in case of blanking operation 
the die is made exactly to the size of the blank. Moreover, the punch is given the clearance, the clearance is always given on the punch. Now, we can see that in case of the blanking operation, die size is equal to the blank size. So, whatever is our final product, it will be equal, the die size will be equal to the final product that we want to make, but where we are going to provide the clearance. The punch size is equal to blank size minus 2 multiplied the clearance, 2 times the clearance. Now, the clearance, what will be the value of the clearance? That can be calculated using a simple formula that is k multiplied by t multiplied by shear strength. Now, S s is the shear strength of the material. So, we can see that clearance is also dependent upon the material of which we are going to make the blank. Why? Because in deciding upon the clearance, the shear strength of the material is coming into picture. So, in depending, depending upon the shear strength of the material, depending upon the thickness, here we can see T is the thickness of the sheet metal stock. So, depending upon the thickness and depending upon the shear strength of the material, we are we have to decide that what is going to be the clearance and what is the size of the punch, because the size of the punch is also dependent upon the clearance. So, we calculate the clearance using this simple mathematical equation that is clearance is equal to k multiplied by t multiplied by s s. So, we have seen that we have shear strength here, thickness of the sheet metal here and what is k? k is a constant whose value may be taken as 0 0.003. So, depending upon a constant, depending upon the thickness of the sheet metal, depending upon the shear strength of the material, we can calculate the clearance and when we know what is the clearance that has to be provided for this particular material and for this particular thickness, we can decide on the size of the punch and die size will be exactly equal to the blank size. So, depending upon our final product that we want to make, we can make a decision regarding the size of the die. We can also make a decision regarding the size of the punch. The clearance will be provided on the punch and the die size will be equal to the blank size when we are talking about the blanking operation, but this scenario may change if our operation is changing. So, we have seen that what is the importance of clearance in the blanking operation. So, in blanking operation we have seen that die size is equal to the blank size, but this may change when we are performing another operation. For example, in the piercing operation the following equations hold, the punch size is equal to the blank size. So, this is exactly opposite to what we have seen in the blanking operation. In blanking operation we saw that the die size is equal to the blank size, but here we are seeing the punch size is equal to the blank size. Moreover, the die size is equal to the blank size plus 2 times the clearance. So, here we are providing the clearance on the size of the die, whereas in case of the blanking operation, we were providing clearance on the size of the punch. Here we are providing the clearance on the size of the die as die size is equal to blank size plus 2 times the clearance. Now, clearance again can be calculated as k multiplied by t multiplied by s s. So, what is k, t and s as already has been discussed for the blanking operation. The clearance is given by the constant k multiplied by the thickness of the sheet metal multiplied, multiplied by the shear strength of the metal that we are using for making the piercing operation. Now, we can see that in we can see that in piercing operation the following equations hold good that have already been discussed. We have seen that when we compare a blanking operation and we compare a piercing operation, the clearance plays an important role where the clearance has to be provided either it has to be provided on the punch or it has to be provided on the die that depends upon the type of operation that we have chosen for our 
final making our final product so hereby we come to the end of this session on sheet metal operations third session sheet metal operations 3 so we have discussed in today's lecture we started our lecture from wherever we left in the last lecture we started the discussion with drying in drying we just reviewed what has been discussed in the last lecture and then we discussed some of the final details regarding the drying operation thereafter we discussed what is embossing then we discussed what is quining after quining we started to discuss the die and punch mechanisms very first die and punch setup for blanking operation was seen how blanking is done done what are the various parameters what is the angular clearance where the clearance has to be provided what is the importance of clearance all that was discussed in this session on sheet metal operations 3 now in the next lecture we will cover some other type of die punch type of arrangements thank you Thank you.